Hello there. It's a pleasure to welcome you to Business Daily coming to you from Trust Television Studio in Abuja. This is where we give you all the factual information and up-to-the-minute updates on development in the world of business, finance, commerce and the stock market. Thank you for always making a date to join us on the program. I am your host, Christiana Amodu Otinya. First, let's take the headlines. We we'll begin from the aviation industry. Trapped funds, Emirates suspends Nigerian flights indefinitely. United Kingdom economy, Bank of England raises interest rate to 3%, highest in 33 years. We'll give you more updates on that in the business roundup segment of the program. However, we'll take a short break and when we return, it'll be time to take you through updates from the stock market. Please stay. Welcome back. Now let's get straight to what's happening with the stock numbers from the local bars on Custom Street in Nigeria's commercial hub, Lagos, talking about the Nigeria exchange. Now we're seeing that the bears are still holding momentum in the local stock market here in Nigeria. We're seeing the all share index, that's a benchmark all share index, decline by 0.10% to settle at 44,236.7. Seven. Now take a look at the activity levels as you can see on the chart here. Now a total volume of 215.15 million shares valued at 1.91 billion naira changed hands in 3,389 deals on the floor of the local bus. Now the equity cap settled at 24.09 trillion naira. Investors on the bus lost about 25 billion naira and at the close of transactions there were 20 depreciating stocks and 9 appreciating stocks in indicating a negative market breath for the market and a weaker investor sentiment on the local buzz. Now let's go over to other African markets. Now we'll look at what's happening with the JSC as you can see here. Now the Johannesburg Securities Exchange up 1.94% at 67,327. In Ghana we are seeing a climb also happening in Ghana, 0.20% at 2,449. Now, for South Africa, on the domestic front, there's a lot of monitoring going on with data, talking about the PMI survey, and also a worsening blackout for South Africa, talking about what's happening with the power utility, the local power utility, the ESCOM, and rising cost of living, which has hindered business activity and customer demand. Several sectors were trading in the red, led by resource-linked shares, and tech stocks but we are seeing that the sentiment is remaining green for the buzzes other african buzzes that we look at on the program let's go over now to wall street and see what's happening in the united states talking about what's happening with u.s markets now is a sea of red and little wonder this was expected by a lot of market watchers and markets those that analyze what's happening in the markets of course we are seeing the jerome powell led federal reserve still wielding the big stick and that's to help rein in what's happening with inflation and it's not just the u.s thing Central banks around the world are trying to see how inflation can be tapered or tamed. And how are they doing that? We are seeing interest rate hikes coming in from across board, across the, the central banks across the world, the ECB, the European Central Bank, the US Fed, even the Nigerian Central Bank. We have seen the Nigerian Central Bank also raise rates. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite, as you can see here, all in the red. So it's a sea of green for the markets, as you can see what's happening right here. And there's a reaction to interest rate hikes, as we have seen happen from, we saw the, the FMOC finish its Finish its meeting, finish its meeting for the week, and we saw the the the, re, the resolutions that was reached come out on Wednesday, and that's what we're seeing markets reacting to in pen ultimate trade. Now let's go over to Europe and see 
what's happening with European stocks. Now we'll begin from the United Kingdom, talking about the FTSE 100. It's up 0.73% at 7,239.6. Now for the FTSE 100, we're seeing the markets looking closely at what's happening with the Bank of England raising rates. And that's, that's like the highest we have seen now for some time now, raising rates, the highest point since the year 1989. That happened on Thursday. Now, it warned investors that the risk of Britain's longest recession in at least a century means borrowing costs are likely to rise less than they expect. Let's go over to the Asia-Pacific region and see what's happening with, with, okay, we have the Asian markets here now. The Nikkei 225 in Japan declining 1.68% there. And for mainland Chinese market in Shanghai, we are seeing a 2.34% increase. And for the South Korean KOSPI, the KOSPI is up 0 083 so we are seeing only the Japanese trade stay in the red here. Other markets are staying positive in Asia. And of course, the focus is still on what's the news coming out from central banks. The market this week largely looked forward to decision from the U.S. Fed. And Jerome Powell did say so much about how the U.S. Central Bank will continue to work and not rela relax on its ears to ensure that inflation comes down. Global economies are still trying to heal from the what we saw happen with the COVID-19 pandemic. The, the pandemic did batter economies around the world. And then the, 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 off, the offshoots of the war, the Russia-Ukraine war, is also still taking a blow, giving a blow to economies around the world. Let's go over to what's happening with commodities, the commodity market. Now, it's, it's okay, we're seeing cocoa bringing the dent on this table. Cocoa is the only red here down 0.29% at $2,372 per metric ton. So all the other arrows are pointing upwards, all going in the green zone. For Brent crude, Brent crude is doing $96.73 per barrel, up 2.18%. I know you, you're wondering what's responsible for that over 2% climb. Now, we're seeing oil prices still up, and there's a lot of focus also on interest rates. One, one, one key thing that the oil market is focusing on is especially what's happening with the COVID outbreak and the COVID policy in China. So that's a major focus for the oil market, what's happening across that street. Now for the bullion, talking about the yellow metal gold, the very attractive and shiny metal. Now the gold is up 1.15% at $1,647.91 an ounce for silver silver still staying steady at the 19 dollars mark remember we have gold deposit also in nigeria there's gold refining going on in ondo state so how can we further harness the mantra of economic diversification and look into all the commodities as you can see right here on your screen wheat palm oil cocoa gold to ensure that we nigeria gets in rakes in more revenue at a time when so much is happening in terms of shoring up revenue in the country. Palm oil is up 2.24%. Wheat is up 1.09%. Looking at the, globe, the cryptocurrency straight now, let's see what's happening with the cryptocurrency market. The crypto watch now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up 1.66% at $20,576. Ethereum is up 2.19% at $1,574. And the Binance coin, a very huge surge here, doing all close to 5%, 5% now, and still trying to move above the 5% mark at $345. Now, the global cryptocurrency market cap was trading flat at $1.01 trillion. Mark. So those are the numbers we have for you on the program today. A lot happening in the stock market. How will the markets end the week? Of course, trust us to bring you all the updates you need to know in on, on Business Daily and also bring in experts to analyze these issues. Now, let's quickly take a look at the business roundup segment of the program. We'll begin from what's happening with the aviation industry. Now, due to its stock funds in Nigeria, the United 
United Arab Emirates, UAE airline has halted all flights to the country. Additionally, it stated that it had not yet received its share of the $260 million that the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, had made available to free some of the blocked cash belonging to foreign airlines. It, the flight cancellation came a week after the UAE government stopped issuing visas to Nigerians traveling to Dubai, which further decreased the load factors of Airline. Going over to the United Kingdom now, the Bank of England has increased its interest rate from 2.25% to 3%, its highest rate hike since the year 1989. This is the ninth time in a row that the Central Bank of the United Kingdom has boosted interest rates. The Monetary Policy Committee of the bank decided to raise the basic interest rate by 0.75 percentage points on Thursday by a vote of 7 to 2. The NPC attributed the decision to raise rate to increase energy costs and a competitive labor market. Now that's the focus for what's happening in the United Kingdom. And that's the all we can take on the business roundup segment of the program. Our focal point on the program today, of course, will be on the free fall we have seen happening with the Naira. Now the CBN made the big announcement some days ago, just recently, of redesigning some notes of the Naira. And there's been a whole experts and market watchers have said there's been a lot of hoarding going on. Some have even tagged it dollarization going on in this whole process. And that's, that will be the focus on the program today. How can this be solved? Many have asked what indeed is the real value of the Naira because when you go over to the website of the Central Bank of Nigeria, you get to see the, the rate that is at the Central Bank of Nigeria's website. And then the parallel market is a different ball game entirely. How will that, how will that impact economic productivity in the country? Many have asked, oh, okay, Naira is falling, the dollar is increasing. Some will say, oh, how does that affect my pocket? How does that affect what I do, my daily activities. Now I'll have a group of experts join me on the program and they'll basically be breaking this down. There's also a key focus. The MPC is supposed to hold its last meeting of the year this month as the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. This would also come in view what, in terms of what to expect, how what's happening around the Forex market would impact the decision that we'll see come out from the Nigerian MPC, the Central Bank of Nigeria. What, what are the announcements to expect from the governor of the Apex Bank, Godwin Emefili, when the MPC meets later this month to determine what, what will be the outlook, especially for the monetary policy and the macroeconomic environment in Nigeria. I'll be joined later on by two erudite gentlemen on the program, a professor of economics and also an economic and developmental analyst. They'll be giving issues and throwing lights to this conversation and basically preferring workable solutions to propel the Nigerian economy. Don't go anywhere. Business Daily continues shortly. road leading up to the Lokoja Bridge from Abuja and as you can see tankers carrying fuel, trucks carrying livestock, perishables and commuters trying to make their way from point A to point B have all been slowed down as a result of the flooding going on in Lokoja. As I tell you so my, 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 my house is inside water like this. This is my house, this green zip is my house. We have no option than to come here and look for what we drop. This, this water has really spoiled many things. Even as I'm talking to you, I'm not in my own house. I want to um, encourage them and assure them that their government, their governor, the governor they elected had come to see them. And government officials have been going there to see them. They are not in this alone. We are with them.
documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. Now we'll get into the conversation proper. I have my guest with me now on the program. I have with me in the studio Dr. Emika Okengu, who is an economist. Thank you always, Doctor, for making our time Pleasure. to be on the it's program. It's a privilege to be here. Yes, and, I, and we have Professor Michael Badon. He's joining us virtually from Lagos. Professor of Economics, member of the Monetary Policy Committee and a non-executive director at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Good morning, Prof, and thank you for joining the program. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me. Prof, I want to begin this conversation with you. Now, the, the week has not really been the best, especially for the looking at the Naira. A lot has been said. Mixed reactions have trailed the announcement by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign the Naira. And we are seeing the parallel market reacting, or responding rather, to that announcement. It, what, what, give, us, give us, calibrate for us what you think is happening. Is the market just soaking in the announcement, or what we are seeing happening with the Naira, especially at the parallel market, hitting above 800 Naira to a dollar? Now, I want you to put on the cap of a professor of economics first and tell me what, what does this mean? What, how would you react to this? Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, let me say that what is happening reflects, you know, the manifestations of a very imperfect market in Nigeria, which uh, economic agents are devoid of altruistic motives are taking advantage of to, you know, create issues for macroeconomic management. And that is the reason why, you know, many people or some people, as it were, who have lorry loads of Naira at home and, you know, they probably didn't, you know, obtain such Naira you know, in a legitimate way and are scared of taking such quantities of Naira, you know, to the bank to deposit the money in anticipation of the issuing of new Naira notes which they can get. And so such people, you know, upon hearing the announcement of redesigning and issuing of new Naira notes by middle of December are scared. Uh, they have joined the hordes of currency speculators and have besieged the parallel market comprising those elements in the market that are, you know, licensed or recognized by the bank, and also those that uh, are not recognized. Uh, they are all operating in the same parallel market now. They, so such people who have huge, you know, quantities of Naira outside the banking system and are scared of taking the money into the commercial banks have now besieged the parallel market and buying the dollar uh, in a desperate way at any price. And so they have pushed up their desperation, continues to get dollars. They will continue to push up the exchange rate. But let me say that this whole scenario of hoarding, you know, dollars, because what they are doing now at the moment is to buy the dollars and go and keep, you know, in the belief that the dollar is uh, safer and uh, less uh, volatile than the Naira. They are not putting the Naira back into the parallel market. And that scenario began, you know, uh, about middle of this year, when the political parties uh, conducted 
their primaries and uh, the information in the public space you know was that the parties or the politicians jostling for various positions uh, put a lot of pressure on the parallel foreign exchange market okay prof I, and, I'll just, I would i would i would want you to hold your thoughts a little now and let me bring Dr. Okengo into the discussion. Now, Prof has, has literally explained to us why we are seeing this happen. There's a lot of hoarding up happening. A lot of people, instead of taking back the old, the Naira notes they have currently to the bank, they are buying dollars. And he tagged it as a very desperate move for these people. Doctor, I want you to speak with regards to, given the fact that Prof has given a background, with regards to the value of the Naira. Now we have a rate at the CBN, that the official rate from the CBN, and we are seeing the parallel market in re recent time is going above 800 Naira to a dollar. What then is the real value of the Naira? The real value is, is, is the one you have access to. Okay, mm. the real value is the one you're purchasing with or purchasing against. And remember that there are about 40 items that you, know, you can no longer get official Forex from. Yes. And again, it's not even possible for you to get 100% for Forex on anything you want to do with the CBN now. Usually, the best or the maximum you can get is about 50%. But that's not even the main issue. The main issue is something that Prof said, which is, which is very instructive. Okay? He said that a lot of these people that have hoarded these monies have gotten them illegitimately. Yeah. And I, I thought that should, that, should, that should strike a chord, okay? Uh, because uh, if we are talking about illegitimacy, uh, we are talking about people who legitimately uh, should hold public funds in trust, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mismanaging or misappropriating or stealing it, okay, and then hoarding it. It's important to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And then if that is the case, then it's, it's a failure. It's a total failure of every uh, uh, monetary, not monetizing money now, yes. monitoring and evaluation, every oversight is a failure of our KPIs, is a failure of, you know, our capacity and ability to be able to rein in, you know, if you may use the word badness. And that's where the problem is. Mm. Okay, because uh, take it or leave it, uh, Naira will never appreciate against the dollar to make the Naira as powerful as the dollar is. Let's get to that reality. The dollar is a global currency. The Naira is struggling against every currency in the sub-region. Mm. In fact, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be surprised to see any, any currency, including the safer that Naira is beating so far. I think we're just at the lowest. And this is going to get you know, worse uh, due to the fact that we are not even struggling to lift the Naira by putting any effort into what can be able to lift it. And this is where you get production or productivity. Mm. So all you do is to support the Naira, hedge the Naira, like the CBN is hedging yeah. the Naira. Yeah. More or less, if you want to make it simple for people to understand, the Naira has been subsidized. You know, for you to be at that level, where we now have an official exchange rate, is not determined by market values. Okay, this is a yeah. deliberate instrument of government, you know, to be able to show, but it, it's not, it's that, it's that a cost. Okay, yeah. somebody is paying for that differential of the market rate, which you might, you know, argue is, is the priority. Okay, um, Prof, I want to come to you now to speak to, I want you to speak to two issues, Prof. I want you to speak to the firstly now, in, in short term, because of course there's, there's still a whole lot ahead of, of the country's economy before the year 2022 wraps up. In short term, how can this be curtailed? And in expectation for the MPC for this month, how, how, how do you think this will significantly impact decisions that will come out from the Monetary Policy Committee meeting? Prof, quickly, sir. Okay, Prof, I just, I, if it, can you hear me now, Prof? Yes. Okay, I wanted you to give us, give us your thoughts on how you think this decision will impact the MPC, MPC decisions, these events that we have seen happening recently. How would it, it will impact MPC decisions as we expect for this month? Well, let me say that uh, the to anticipate what the MPC decision will be. But I will say that, yes, our members of the committee will are definitely concerned 
about the trend of the exchange rate as at this point in time. The continued uh, instability in the direction of big devaluations since uh, the political parties' primaries. You know, a number of people from that, you know, event are still holding dollars with which they are bribed. And if they had released such dollars at the time they were given, the exchange rate would not continue to depreciate. But a good number of them, I believe, are still keeping those dollars in the mode of speculation, hoping that the exchange rate will further depreciate, just like you know those who have large quantities of money are now doing. So definitely, the MPC will be concerned. And I'm sure that uh, through the deliberations, the committee will come up with a number of measures, perhaps rather you know, stringent measures, you know, of continuing and the high devaluations, particularly in the parallel market. Okay, okay, which Prof. Okay, okay, Prof. Thank you, thank you, Prof. I want to quickly come to Dr. Okengo now. I want you to speak to how this can be, how we can curtail, the, curtail this, I beg your pardon, in short term, in one minute. Curtail what? Curtail this issue happening with the Naira. That's the, the parallel market, basically. Mm -hmm. How we can ensure that we don't see the, the Naira continue on a free fall in coming weeks, basically, before we get the decisions from the MPC. Nothing. Nothing can mm -hmm. be done. So we, are going to, we should expect the free fall to continue. Yes, it's going to, it's going to continue. Or uh, to a point where we get to what you call the head immunity. Mm. Okay? It's going to just continue. So don't, don't, uh, there's no magic we can do. All mm. right, uh, we are, when you have a free fall, it's like somebody trying to say break a fig for you, break it when you fall. So we get to have to that point where we get to nothingness and time. Probably at that point when I begin to build. Because you see, every other thing we have thrown at every, every policy, every yes. program that we seem to have been, you know, trying to resolve this hasn't worked. And I tell you why it's not going to work. In five seconds. Yes, five please. Seconds, okay. Your physical authority. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is now at, 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 at war, if you may, mm. with your monetary authority. There's no synergy. So where are you going to begin to now get this alliance or synergy of minds to begin to now prefer solutions? So basically, alignment between fiscal and monetary policy should help. It's the reason why it will not work, because there's no alignment. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Emeka Okengu, the economist. We also have Professor Mike Obadon, Professor of Economist, member of the MPC, and also non-executive director at the CBN. Shared your thoughts on what's happening, especially basically helping broaden the situation happening with the free fall of the Naira. That's why we draw the curtains for the program today. Thank you for investing your time with us on the program. Happy 50th birthday to, to your Madame. wife, Thank Dr. Okengu. You so much. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for investing you. your time with us. At home, do have a lovely day ahead. Goodbye. Thank you very much.